Hey everyone, welcome back. It is the night of November 4th, the day after the election. If you remember in the last video, it was the day before election day, so it was a couple days ago, November 2nd. Uh, we put, we placed some trades, so we um, applied a strategy to a number of stocks where we went a half long and half short. And so now we need to check on how we did. And so um, the market just ramped up to the upside so now we're worried right we must have lost a bunch of money since we added short positions but you'll see that is not the case so uh if we check out our trade log which was output by uh, our script so uh, we have our cron tab already set up and the first thing i'll talk about actually is um and i didn't talk about this in the last video which i realized so we had two different scripts we had the opening range breakout and the opening range breakdown so uh, this opening range breakout found uh, stocks to go long when uh, they broke out above their opening range and then the second script was the opening range breakdown which we coded in the last video to enter some short positions now you'll look at the uh, times this is running and I did make one adjustment. So this is running every minute. So this first position is the minutes place and this is saying run every minute. But um, one modification we wanted to make, I had all stars here, which means basically every hour, every day and so forth. So this, this script was always running every minute. But what we really want, the market is only open for like six, six and a half hours. Uh, a day and it's only open on the weekdays and so we're just trading during a regular market hours and so the modification I made here if you want to go to cron tab guru here um, you only want to trade uh, during certain hours and so uh, I'm on the west coast so the machine I ran this on um, I only wanted to actually run it uh, every hour so a six the 6 a.m. hour through the noon hour since the market opens at 6.30 a.m. on the West Coast over here and closes at 1 p.m. So I just had it this run uh, from 6 a.m. till uh, 12 and then every minute after that. So this will actually run um, all the bars from 6.30 a.m. all the way through uh, 12.59, so the last minute before uh, the market closes. And then I have this other line here, this other position here. If I were to put a star, it would run every single day. But since I put 1-5 like this, it'll only run on weekdays, so Monday through Friday. And so this is how I set up the rule so that it ran during uh, market hours every minute and only Monday through Friday. And so I was running both of these scripts and logging the output to trade.log right here. So it runs the script, redirects the output to trade.log. And so anything we print in those scripts ends up going to trade.log, right? And so that trade.log goes to my home directory. And so I'm in my home directory here on OS X at least. And then you see I have this trade.log here. And what I was doing is I just uh, tailed that log. So you can do tail-f trade.log. And this will let you actually monitor the log in real time. And so this will, basically you can just watch the logs as new lines come in, right? And so I just had that open all day. But if I look at the whole thing, and I go to edit the log, I can either use VI or if you want to use like nano, a little more user friendly if you don't know know your VI uh, shortcuts. Um, but I just used a VI. But if you want to use nano or Pico or one of those programs, you can as well, or just open it up in Visual Studio Code. But you'll notice uh, this is logging what happened on, we ran this for November 3rd, which was yesterday. And so we entered five long positions, five short positions, and actually, out of those 10, 10 uh, stocks we chose to apply our strategy to, only two of them actually received uh, the buy signal. And those were Comerica Bank and NIO. All right. And so you'll see at, uh, when was this? 9.45. So it actually, uh, CMA, if we look at the chart, so we have charts built into our web app, right? So we have this embedded chart. And so if you pull up, uh, CMA and you look at November 3rd what happened I have the minute chart pulled up and then this is the first 15 minutes you see this opening range it's not a huge opening range it's the thing right and so that was the opening range it closed above it right and that's where we entered our trade and then we set a stop below this opening range right and then we set uh, 
a uh, take profit price as well. So we placed that bracket order, right? And you see it continued to trend up. And so if we look inside here, you'll see that uh, it did indeed close outside of that opening range and we printed the bar, we placed the order. And then if we look in uh, our alpaca here, right? Uh, you'll see that the CMA order uh, was placed and this was the first minute after 6.45 for me. And so this order was placed and filled. And then we had a, a limit buy at 48.53 and then a stop at 47.92 and a limit sell at 49.15. And that was filled and we made a profit, which is good, right? Just what we wanted. So that's a profitable trade, right? And then any other subsequent uh, check, um, we already had the order in, so it didn't reorder it again. So that worked as well. And then um, you'll see here at, uh, it was like seven minutes in, so a little bit later, um, you'll see 6.53 a.m. Uh, NIO, which was one of our, our picks. That's been a pretty hot stock people have been talking about lately. Uh, we entered another trade and it filled at uh, 33.84. And then looks like the sell um, also filled at, at 34.91. And so another profitable trade and then the stop was canceled. So our bracket order canceled uh, both of the stop loss orders and we had two profitable, both trades that we entered were profitable and for $170 out of what, that was like 79, 8K or so. So that's pretty cool, right? We wrote some Python code, it automatically executed. I didn't have to do anything and we got a couple percent gain. But uh, it's not that great actually because the S&P 500 uh, took off to the upside. So uh, we didn't really outperform anything. It's just all stocks happened to go up that, that day. But you know, we did make a couple percent. Just do 2% every day, right? Very easy. So you just do uh, 10,000 times uh, 1.02 to the 252, 252 trades a year. Keep compounding. There you go, $1.5 million, right? Easy as that. Uh, it's not always that easy, right? We, we all know that this is not gonna work every single day. Um, this could have just been a coincidence, right? We didn't back test it. We didn't do anything, but you know, it's pretty cool to see that in action. Um, if you've made it this far and actually uh, built this out and saw a program execute trades automatically, um, I think you've gone further, further than most people. A lot of people just uh, talk about this stuff, but don't actually code it out and uh, make it happen. So, so I think this was a pretty cool outcome already. And you know we're not even done yet. We're gonna keep adding stuff. We're gonna add another strategy, add some more UI and so forth. And so uh, one one cool kind of cool thing about this strategy that I liked, even though it's you know it's very simple, uh, but I did like that you know we had five short trades and the market just ripped up up to the upside. And even though we had some some uh, short ideas, none of those hit the signal, and so none of those actually executed. And so uh, we were protected, right? They had to break down to the downside first to even enter those short positions. So uh, even on a huge up day, when we were, were completely wrong in our thesis on shorting something like uh, VMware, right? So that, that went up huge. Uh, so we're completely wrong about that, or I was completely wrong for selecting that one. Uh, but you know, it never broke down, so we never hit the signal and never entered. So we only uh, entered things that uh, confirmed. And so this NIO, you know, that was a great stock. And that even, you know, went further, you know, so that was a great uh, pick actually. So that's that's even up more, another 6% uh, today. I think it was up even 10% at one point. So yeah, that was a good one. And then, you know, you're protected on the downside by your stop loss. And then something like uh, CMA, which we just made a profit on, we're already out. So we, we took this, this profit running in and then we just took the profit, right? And then today, uh, the stock actually tanked, but uh, we managed um, our risk and also took profits. So good little hit and run trade that executed there. So um, yeah, that's the opening range breakout and that's how it worked out. So in this video, I want to add a few more things to the UI that we don't have yet. Uh, the first thing I want to add is uh, more filters. So we're only, we only have these two filters for new closing highs and lows, but it'd be good to filter on these tulip indicators that we've stored in our database. And so I'll add an oversold and overbought indicators and close above and close below uh, moving averages as a filter here so that we can use this to screen for candidates 
in other ways. So uh, we can add as many indicators or whatever we want to filter on uh, to this UI. The other thing I want to add is a nav bar because you'll notice uh, we were adding things to, we're applying our strategy to stocks, but there was no really real way to like browse our database of strategies and, and see all the stocks that we're applying that strategy to. So I want a way, way to get there. And then the third thing I want to do is show some order and trade history. That way we can monitor our profit and loss in this system. And so I think it'd be good to add an overall nav bar at the top here of the page so that it says stocks, strategies, and orders uh, as our three main uh, sections so far of this web app. And it'll easily let us jump between those. So let's go ahead and add a nav bar as well. So um, yeah, the first thing I'll do, let's go ahead and add uh, the filters part. So uh, new, in addition to new closing highs and new closing lows, let's add uh, overbought, oversold, and uh, closed above and below these moving averages as filters. So we'll go to uh, the index.html template where we've defined these filters in this dropdown. And let's just copy one of these and then we'll get the pattern. So uh, we have new closing lows and so Let's say we have a couple more that we want. Let's say we call this one RSI overbought and RSI oversold. And so we'll check the value of the filter, decide whether it is selected or not. And then we'll also label it. So we'll say RSI overbought and RSI oversold. And then we'll give it some kind of value here. So we'll say uh, RSI overbought and RSI oversold, okay? And if I refresh this, you'll see the dropdown gets updated. And now we have this RSI overbought and RSI oversold option here. And I can submit it. And you'll see in the URL, it says filter equals RSI oversold. But this doesn't do anything yet. We need to uh, update the backend Python code to uh, check for this filter and then execute a query to actually find the oversold stocks. So to do this, we'll go to our code, our Python code, and go to our main.py. Here is our index route, right? We get the request and then we process the filter. We already have this set up. And so we're checking the values of the stock filter. Currently, we're just checking for new closing highs and new closing lows as the filter, but we can add additional filters. So we'll just say, we'll just put this as in a bit in a big L else if for now. And then we'll just do if stock filter equals uh, RSI overbought. We'll execute a query and then else if stock filter is RSI oversold, uh, we can execute a different filter, right? And then what is what is the query uh, that we would execute? So for overbought, we'll just use the regular old standard um, RSI greater than 70. Uh, technically, we could put a uh, text box up here and let the user uh, enter that. So they could put like RSI overbought of 80 if they want it really overbought and stuff like that. Uh, we'll, we'll keep it simple for now. So I'll do RSI overbought and then we don't need this out, outer query anymore. Okay. And then, yeah, we don't really need that. So let's see, we don't need the group by, we don't need the uh, min close anymore. So really all we want is a simple select. We want um, select, we want select symbol name, stock ID date, and then we join stock price on stock order by symbol, and then our where clause. So we're not selecting every stock. We only want these stocks where uh, the RSI, and what did I call it? I called it uh, RSI 14 here. So where RSI 14 is greater than 70. And, and what else do we need? So we want where RSI 14 is greater than 70 and date equals, and we'll use this select max uh, from stock price. If we do that, then we'll find stocks where the most recent date, the max date in the database, um, where the RSI for that max date is greater than 70. So if I run this filter, you'll see RSI 14, and you see all these stocks have an RSI greater than 70, 80. So let's check on a couple of these just to verify. So you see the RSIs are over 70, and then I can click on, let's say, see ADP here, and let's see how it looks. Is it overbought? And then you see right here, starting in September. So this has huge uh, momentum to the upside. 
and let's just add the indicator. So we have this trading view uh, integrated, right, with the widget. And so if we look at the relative strength index here, uh, you'll see that it's indeed above 70 and overbought. So this uh, recent move where it made a tear to the upside uh, got it into an overbought uh, situation. All right, so that seems to work. And then we can just check on one more. Let's just check on um, Crocs. It's apparently overbought. A lot of people buying Crocs. And then, wow, Crocs has been a great stock since the bottom here. Went to the single digits. Um, and then I can click uh, indicators, the FX here. And then if I say relative strength index there, um, you'll see that it's above 70 as well. So Crocs is overbought. But also, you see how overbought here can indicate a very st strong trend. And so a lot of stocks like this that are overbought stay overbought. All right, so our overbought is working. So that seems to be good. And now let's just add oversold real quick. So I'll go ahead and add uh, this query here. And for RSI oversold, right? And then we'll check this and we'll set check RSI is less than 30 as our query. And then if I run this, RSI oversold, click submit. So you'll see now I have stocks with RSI uh, 14 that are less than 30. So these stocks uh, are oversold. And so, you know, you might decide to enter a position because a stock is oversold on the daily. You might want to uh, enter uh, and go long that stock. And so we can check on some of these real quick. For instance, uh, what do I recognize? Akamai, right? And so uh, Akamai here, if I look at that, um, you'll see if I add, must have been this recent drop off, it became oversold. And so if I go to relative strength index and put it on here, you'll see it went oversold. Um, and it looks like it's no longer oversold on uh, November 4th. And why is that? Oh, okay, so it looks like, okay, I have, I've, it looks like I've only run the snapshot through November 3rd which was yesterday. And so yesterday it actually was oversold on November 3rd. If you look down here, it was oversold. So you could have selected Akamai, right? And said, oh, this is deeply oversold. Our size below 30. And that could have been one of your buys. And then looks like today it rallied strongly. And so it's no longer uh, oversold now. So I only had to have data up through uh, November 3rd. So um, if you were filtering on oversold, then you know Akamai could have been an example of something that you bought. Okay, so um, Akamai. Okay, so overbought, oversold. We added that, and let's go ahead and, for completeness, add uh, above and below on the moving averages because sometimes you want stocks that are above a moving average so that you can get a stock in an uptrend or downtrend, for instance, um, as additional uh, to have additional signal strength. And so let's go ahead and add some more queries for, um, let's call this uh, SMA or above SMA 20, right? And then we can find stocks where I called it SMA 20 on the column. So, so we'll do uh, where uh, close is greater than SMA 20. And then we just keep copying this. Okay, and SMA 20 below SMA 20. And so we do close below SMA 20, and we copy both of those. Um, and I know that after a while this becomes unmaintainable, and so we'd want to uh, refactor this, um, but I think we're gonna leave the app at this, so th this is gonna be fine. So we'll do above SMA 50, below SMA 50, uh, above SMA 50, and below SMA 50. Right, and then we go to our index and, let, and let's go ahead and copy one of these options and then we'll just fill in a SMA for this one. So there's RSI oversold, but I'll do um, above SMA 20, selected and then above SMA 20, and then a regular text description above SMA 20 or above 20 SMA. And then I can just copy this one uh, four times and then just substitute out the numbers. And then I'll have above, below, above, below. So I'll just have below 20 SMA, below 20 SMA. And then below, above and below the SMA 50. right 
All right. And so now if I go here and we can just make sure this works real quick. Oop, I have one error above SMA 20 in main.py above SMA 20. Oh, I forgot the quotes. All right, so we'll close all those strings. And now we refresh, refresh, and then above SMA 20. All right, SMA 20 is 104.96, price is above it. Um, if we do below SMA 20, should get a different list, right? Price is 113, it's below 115. And then above SMA 50, uh, SMA 50 is 101.61, price is above it and so on and so forth. So that's looking pretty good. So now we have now we have the ability to use tulip indicators. We're snapshotting them on the daily. And then we have these filters where we can use them to um, filter down to specific stocks we might be interested in if we want to take a first pass using indicators before implementing another strategy on top of that. So it's good to, to find stocks that are above their uh, a simple moving average just to uh, filter out some stocks that have been in a downtrend. So that's all set up and so that's goal number one and then our other two goals is are we want to list our strategies and be able to browse our strategies and drill down and see stocks we've applied to uh, uh, stocks we've applied a strategy to so we're going to add that and then we're going to also add the ui to view our order history so let's go ahead and add the nav bar so that we can navigate uh, between those pages and so uh, let's go to semant back to semantic ui since we haven't done that in a while and then we'll browse the widgets available and they should have a menu element. So if you look on the left side here, these are all the different elements that are available. And then if you scroll down and I search for menu, where's that menu. So under collections here, they have menus. And so they have this type of menu that looks like more like tabs. So you can use these types of tabs with the pointer or this type of menu. And so there's a lot of examples here. Um, so let's try, uh, this style here and so we'll take that and then if you click that it'll show a little source code snippet and we'll try putting that um, in our layout so we have this layout already right and so in our layout we have our container um, but this is going to be above that overall container so if I put this here paste it here above that container so it's the first thing in the body we want it at the top of the page so I'll do this I'll refresh it. I still see nothing. Why is that? We added this layout that we're supposed to apply. So stock detail extends the layout and has a block content. A strategy has it. But you'll remember one thing I noticed is that when I first created the index, I had the head and body built in, but never actually used the layout. And so we want to, when we're refactoring, we never applied this layout to index.html. So I'm updating index.html. And so index.html no longer needs the HTML head body there because that's already built into the layout. And so all it needs to do is override the block content. So I'll put block content there. And then at the very end, we don't need um, this body in HTML, right? And then I don't think, yeah, we don't need the div either because the container is built into the template. Okay, so we just need block content, and at the very end, we just need end block. If I do that, it's now using the layout, right? And now you see home messages and friends in this little nav bar, since that's the example from Semantic UI. But obviously, we're not using mess messages and friends, right? Maybe we'll add a friends feature, but not right now. Um, and there's this little thing, I don't think we need that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So let's go back to our layout. And then this segment, there's like an empty segment here. Don't need that. Don't need a logout yet. Although we'll add authentication. Let's go ahead and leave that and we'll add to it later so that we can have this little logout on the right side. We'll add authentication. I said we'd add authentication, so I'll leave that. And then so we have home, we'll call it uh, stocks. And then this item will be strategies. And this item will be uh, order history, right? And we'll put that. And then now we have a nav bar going, which is cool. And yeah, let's let's start with that. And then we can tweak this as needed. All right, so this is our stock page. 
And so the stock page, we have an, an A, a link tag. So that just needs to always link to the base, which is just a slash. Okay. So anytime, like if I'm on this page, right, we have a nav bar now. Uh, look, okay, there's our chart. There's uh, our table. And then if I want to get back to my stock listing, I click that and it goes back to slash. I'm back in my stock list. If I click on strategies, nothing happens yet because we haven't linked it up. So I'll do href equals and we'll call this route strategies and we'll call this route uh, orders, so slash orders. And so now we just need to build a uh, fast API backend functions to accept uh, the strategy route and the orders route. And so we'll do that. And then anywhere down here, we can just add some additional routes. Um, so we'll put it above strategy here. We'll do app.get. Um, and then this is for viewing a single strategy. We'll make a route for strategies, which will be all the strategies. And then we'll have a similar a signature here where we accept a request um, and we don't need a single strategy and we'll call this one strategies. And then instead of uh, rendering the strategy HTML, uh, we'll, we'll re render a template called a uh, strategies.html. Okay. And then we're passing in the request, which is good. And then let's go ahead and make a template called strategies.html. So strategies.html we'll need. And we'll make, also make a template called orders.html that we'll use in a moment. And then this one needs to extend the layout. So strategies, extends the layout. And then we'll have a block and we'll just say h1 strategies. And we'll copy this to orders as well, just to make sure we have a template for them. And then we'll fill this in with data. So there's strategies. orders. So we have an orders.html. And then our main.py, we have strategies. And we'll make one called orders. Okay, so the route will be orders. And the function will be called orders. And we'll render the orders.html template. Okay, so do that. Click strategies. Now we have a bare bones template for strategies and we click orders, we have a bare bones template for orders, and we'll fix this where it like highlights the currently selected one as well. Okay, so we have a way to navigate in our page between uh, different sections of the site, which is good. So how do we get strategies? Uh, we can get our database connection just like this. Uh, so we get our connection, and I'm gonna do one re big refactor at the end where we uh, define our database connection all in one place. Uh, right now I'm gonna copy it one more time to here. And so we have a connection equals SQLite connection DB file, making a cursor and I'll do cursor.execute, right? And then I can do a select star from strategies. And then I can say strategies equals uh, cursor.fetch all. And then I'll pass it to the template strategies Okay, and then in this template, I can loop through each of the strategies. Um, in my stock detail page, I'm gonna just grab an example of a table in, uh, so I'll get an example of a table. So we just need this UI uh, stripe table. And then in our strategies template, let's go ahead and just put a table of our strategies. So UI stripe tables, and then I'll do uh, for strategy in strategies, right, uh, we'll do TR. So we have a new row for each one, and then we'll just do the strategy.name like that. And I refresh internal server error. Uh, no such table of strategies. It's because I called the table strategy. So I use the singular name for strategy. So if you look, we have a table called strategy. And so I'll go back to main.py and we're selecting from strategy. Okay. And then there's my table. Why do I not see anything? Oh, it's because I don't have that row factory. So I need um, connection.row factory equals SQLite.row or SQLite3.row like that. 
All right, and if I do that, it'll get those attributes like I want. Okay, opening range breakout, opening range breakdown are the two strategies that I have here, and we'll add another strategy in the next video. So that's my list of strategies, and then let's go ahead and link those up. So if I do um, a link tag for each of these, so I'm gonna link the strategy name to a strategy detail page, like so. And then the href will just be a strategy slash and then strategy ID. Okay. If I do that and if I hover over, I click that, you'll see it goes to strategy one and it has all the stocks for opening range breakout. Click this, you'll see all the stocks for opening range breakdown, which I don't have any for this particular run yet. So let's go ahead and pick one real quick. So we'll go to our, uh, New closing highs list, my, my most recent one. We'll filter it down. Uh, yeah, I guess Agilent, ticker symbol A, Agilent Technologies has been doing well. Wow, look at that. Why have I not been in this for uh, years and years? Uh, it's just been in a nice trend and it looks like it's breaking out again. So Agilent Technologies, ticker the first stock in the list. So we'll just add that to opening range breakout. So there it is. I'll go to strategies here, click opening range breakout. You see that we, we have our list there. Opening range breakdown has none. So we'll go back. Let's see if we can find one. So let's get a, let's get an overbought example, right? And then we'll use that. So we have an overbought and then let's see if we can just find one real quick that we want to short. So we'll short an over uh, bot stock. So, so Dolby, which treated us right, it's on our list now, and it's currently overbought. And look at that, we picked that, I believe, last week, and it's just been green bar after green bar, so Dolby's really been taken off. So I think they have earnings. Someone in the comments mentioned earnings coming up, so maybe it's running into earnings. Um, but yeah, now it's actually overbought after that run. And a lot of these stay overbought with a strong trend, but let's go ahead and bet against Dolby this time and just do opening range breakdown. All right, Dolby's in our list, so we have a way to browse our, our strategies now. And so let's see if we can hook up an order history. So we'll go back to our template for orders. Uh, let's add one of these tables. So we have UI striped table, just like that. And then how do we get a list of tables? So this template just has our front end for displaying, and then the main.py has our routes for uh, doing our, our logic to get the data. And so I have an orders route here, which has no logic yet. And so how do I get the orders? Well, we can use Alpaca for that, right? That's the authoritative source of that data. So we'll go ahead and hit Alpaca directly for that. Um, another approach, uh, one, one thing about hitting the Alpaca API when we hit a web page, if we keep adding more and more uh, uh, requests to their API, would slow it down over time because we need to reach out to a remote uh, server. So we could, we can, right now we'll just uh, access Alpaca's API directly, but we could also, um, technically we could load the page first and then have JavaScript fetch it. That way we don't block up the page or we could uh, store a copy of our successful orders locally in our database. That way we don't have to reach out remotely. Uh, so we could look locally as well. But for right now, I think it's simplest to just use the, the API. And so if you're, you'll remember in our opening range breakout and breakdown, we have this call to API list orders. And so we can just copy our little API initialization here uh, from there. And then we'll go to our uh, main.py. And then we have API equals trade API dot rest. And then we have our orders, so we can list all of our orders. Um, yeah, let's just list them all. Okay, so we'll list all our orders and then let's import the trade API here. So we'll do um, import uh, Alpaca trade API as API. And then I'll go back to orders here. I'll do uh, API equals, oh, we'll import it as trade API. Okay. So import it as trade API, and then I'll jump back down. API equals trade API. We already have our config, right? Config is imported, so that's good. 
Okay, and so I'll do orders equals API dot list orders, get all the orders, and then we'll pass orders to our template. So we'll have orders, colon orders. Okay, and then in our template now, which is orders.html, I'll just do a for order in orders, and we're just doing loops through the data that we uh, retrieved in our route. And so we'll create a new table row, and then we'll print the order. And we may need to print the attributes directly. I'll see if we can just dump it here. So I'll do that. And look at that, we got this big dump of order objects on the screen, nice and ugly. Uh, let's pick some specific fields that we want to show. So this is our order object, and let's, I'm just gonna paste it here so that I can reference it easy. Uh, so instead of just order, we'll use uh, asset ID, we don't need that. Uh, we'll do a created at, so we'll use this created at field, so we'll do order.created at. Okay, we'll do another cell, and then we'll do, well, so we got filled price, filled average price, filled quantity, so we'll do order dot filled average price, and we'll do uh, order, we'll do order filled quantity here, order dot filled quantity here, okay, and then we'll do Uh, the side, so we'll do order dot side like that. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. Oh, all right. So we have some dates, buy and sell. Um, we'll probably want a status and the actual symbol that we actually bought. So we'll say sell. So we'll do order dot symbol. Okay. So sell, buy, sell, N, I, O, okay. And then we'll do, I'll do quantity before the symbol. All right, so on November 3rd, we bought 100 shares of NIO at 33.84, and then we sold 100 shares at 34.91. And then this did not fill, so this is our canceled order. So let's go ahead and show the status as well. That was our stop loss that we didn't need to use. So we'll do order.status. All right, good. So we have filled order for CMA and NIO, and then we have all these other canceled orders from when I was testing. So good, we have an order list now. And then let's put some headings here just to make it look a little better. So above the for loop here, uh, we'll do uh, another row. And then we'll do some TH, some header rows, and we'll do uh, created side quantity symbol and price and status. So price and status, All right? And there you go, we have some headings here as well. So that is all good. And I think, what do we have, T head? Yeah, T head around there, I guess, gives it the extra style. So we'll put this T head instead of TH, or around the headings. So where was I? So I'll do T head that. And semantic UI seems to want that. Okay, there you go, looks a little bit better. So we have our orders page for our order history. We have our strategies page to browse through our strategies and then drill down to see the stocks that we're applying uh, that strategy to. And we have our stock list and we have the ability to filter on our tulip indicators. So there you go. Anyone that wanted an order history and strategy list there and to be able to browse your profits and loss here, uh, there you go. That's that's there now. So we're not done yet. We're still adding stuff. So um, that's it for this video. I just wanted to review our recent traits and show that we were able to uh, make a profit when testing this uh, system for opening range breakout. And even though we shorted some stocks, we still came out profitable because the uh, signal for that day did not uh, come up. And so yeah, opening range breakout UI 
And that's good for now. And in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, code a new strategy. I think we'll just use something else that's built into Tulip indicators and code some intraday strategy uh, based around one of those indicators. So uh, stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.